thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. Minecraft, one of the most popular games in the world. Also a game that I've never played before in my life. Please don't hate me. But OpenAI has designed a deep learning model that plays Minecraft just as well as a human can, and they did it using YouTube videos. Let's dive in. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jordan, and I make videos about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and grad life as an MIT PhD student. If that sounds interesting to you, definitely consider subscribing. And if there are other papers or models that you'd love to see me cover, leave a comment down below because I'm always looking for interesting research, preferably something that isn't about large language models or transformers, but otherwise leave a comment. Today we're going to be talking about a method that was recently released by OpenAI in late June 2020 called Video Pre-Training and how they used it to develop a deep neural network that was able to play Minecraft. And I often try to cover papers that aren't necessarily from places like OpenAI or DeepMind or Google just because I think that they get a lot of press on their own. But this is a model that I actually wanted to cover because I thought that the way that they trained it was super interesting. Typically when we see models like this, so deep learning systems that are trained to play video games, we're looking at deep reinforcement learning. So models like AlphaGo, which learned how to play the game Go via many, 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 many games, and a reward system based on the outcomes of each game. This model actually takes a different approach to doing that and takes a different approach to the data used to do that, and I thought that that was pretty cool. So as with all deep learning models and as with ML in general, this model actually starts with people. OpenAI hired contractors to produce the initial data that was used to train what they call an inverse dynamics model. And so these people were essentially paid to play Minecraft for about 2000 hours and to log their mouse and keyboard actions so that they had a labeled training data set of what happens when you click a particular part of Minecraft or use a keyboard in a particular way. Can you tell that I've never played Minecraft? Yeah. So they could use that to train this model to predict what actions happen next given both what led up to that particular action on the keyboard and mouse and what came after. And so this is called their inverse dynamics model and the idea here is that the IDM is able to predict the actions being taken at each step in the video and therefore should be able to label additional video that we don't know the keystrokes and the mouse movement for based on what it's learned from this original 2000 hours of video. And that's exactly what they did. So they went on YouTube and found originally, I think about 240,000 hours of video of people playing Minecraft. So that's a lot of video. I'm sure there's much more on YouTube. And they were able to pare that down to about 70,000 hours of unlabeled video that didn't have people's faces in it, that didn't have other things obscuring the screen, that generally just showed the Minecraft frame. Here's what I found. No, Siri. Siri's trying to teach me to play Minecraft. From there, they took the inverse dynamics model and labeled all 70,000 hours of that Minecraft YouTube video data that they collected with the mouse and keyboard actions based on the 2000 hours of data that they hired those contractors to generate. And using all of that labeled video, they were able to train a video pre-training foundation model to predict what actions should occur. So what mouse movements, what keyboard inputs should happen only based on the past frame. So the model shown everything leading up to the action that it needs to take, and then it needs to take whatever appropriate action it's supposed to take. And so it turns out it performs pretty well. It is able to create a wooden log, wooden plank, and then a crafting table under zero shot. So not being prompted with what steps to do and then told to continue that sequence, but just being thrown into a situation and having to do something. From there, they were interested in fine tuning this VPT model to see whether or not you could make it really, really good at doing some of the initial tasks that one might do in Minecraft, such as building a house. And so they brought those contractors back in, had them play for 10 minutes at the beginning of Minecraft, and had them build a house from very basic tools to basically see if they could have the VPT model learn how to do exactly that. And as one might expect, the fine tune model performed a lot better at those initial tasks. This is a log uh, y axis, so you're not seeing a linear change, you're seeing a log change. 
and the fine-tuned model, which is in green, performed way better than the original zero-shot model. Lastly, they fine-tuned a reinforcement learning model to see whether or not you could have an RL model get to the point of creating a diamond pickaxe, which Again, I do not play Minecraft. And they compared just training a normal RL model to attempt to do this from a random initialization to fine tuning a reinforcement learning model on a VPT model. And the VPT model, again, as you might expect, performed a lot better than the RL model. So in short, I actually think that the more interesting thing that came out of this was the idea of model and how it kind of fits into training a model that's able to perform this well based on having enough labeled data in order to train a model well and having potentially a ton of data, but no way of labeling it. So using an idea model to do exactly that. Of course, this all depends on how representative that data that the IDM model is trained on. So if you have an IDM model that is trained on data that isn't representative of the full picture that you're trying to attack, chances are the labeling on your data set is going to not be correct. We know that from past videos on Fairness and AI. But more than that, the reason why this paper caught my eye is actually because I've been wanting to do a video where I train an AI algorithm to play Among Us, but the Among Us API was never released, so I never got around to doing it. And this would be a great workaround for that. So if you think that that would be a cool video, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you want to level up your Minecraft skills using AI but need to brush up on your machine learning skills first, I would highly recommend checking out Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Brilliant is a visually stimulating and interactive tool for STEM learning built on the principle of active problem solving. They have an ever-growing catalog of courses in math, science, and computer science that are designed to help you gain a deep understanding of STEM topics in a low-pressure environment. For example, Brilliant has an awesome Introduction to Neural Networks course that will leave you ready to build a neural network yourself once you're finished. And if you're worried that you might not have time, don't worry, their courses are broken down into bite-sized sections so you can learn whenever you have free time. To get started for free, go to brilliant.org slash Jordan or visit the link in the description and the first 200 people to go to that link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. If you want to see me go over other interesting AI ML papers, I will leave a playlist up here. You can follow me on my various socials down here and otherwise I will see you all in the next one. Bye!